Hello everyone. A very good morning to all of you. Am I live? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Give me a minute to confirm if I'm clearly visible or audible. I will start the class ahead. Yes, I hope it's working. So a very, very good morning to all of you. I welcome you all for today's session. I am Dr. Priyanka Sachdev here. And today I'm here to take my series of bacteriology. So I have started this series few days back, yesterday only, uh, in which I am going to cover all the bacteria one by one in a comparative tubulated manner. So we have already covered Staphylococcus yesterday. Now it's time to study Streptococcus today. We have already covered general bacteriology also, in which we have studied the various strains which are um, important in the bacteriology. We have studied gram staining. We have studied uh, acid fast staining, Albert staining, the various staining processes. We have studied the culture media. Those who have missed those live lectures, the recordings are available. You can anytime watch the recording. Anyways, now it's time to start streptococcus now. In bacteriology, I'm going to start a new bacteria today. That is streptococcus. Yesterday, we have already covered staphylococcus. And now I'm starting with streptococcus. Give me a thumbs up in the chat box if, if you can see me, if you can hear me. So I'm starting with streptococcus, right? So we know that uh, gram-positive cocci are two. There are two gram-positive cocci. Just a second. There are, we divide the bacteria. We divide all bacteria into four categories. So in the classification of the bacteria, I already taught you, we divide the bacteria into four categories based on two classification. One is gram-staining, gram-positive, gram-negative, gram-positive, gram-negative. And second is the shape of the bacilli, whether they are cocci or whether they are bacilli, whether they are spherical in shape or whether they are in rod shape. So gram positive cocci, gram negative cocci, gram positive bacilli and gram negative bacilli. So this is the broad, broad classification we use in bacteriology, right? Right. So gram positive cocci are of two types, staphylococcus and streptococcus. Yesterday we have studied staphylococcus. Now it's time to study streptococcus. Gram negative cocci. After streptococcus, I'm going coming uh, coming on gram negative cocci. I will I will teach you I will teach you Neisseria and Morexella. So two bacteria I'm going to teach you here in gram negative cocci. So total in cocci family in cocci family total four bacteria are there. So all these four bacteria we are going to cover one by one in cocci. Two are gram positive, two are gram negative. Then we will move on bacilli in bacilli family. First, we will cover gram positive bacilli, which are five in number A, B, C, D, L. You know this classification, I guess. It is actinomycetes, it is bacillus anthrax, clostridium, all types of clostridium, diphtheria, cornibacterium, diphtheria, and listeria. So, I will teach you these five bacteria one by one. And after that, in the end, we will move the biggest family gram negative bacilli. So, remaining all bacteria, what are all remaining? Remaining any, any, all bacteria. So it can be Rickettsia, it can be Spirochetes, it can be E. coli, it can be Clapsiella, it can be Salmonella, it can be Shigella, it can be Vibrio, right? So all the other bacteria are included in this family. This is the biggest family. So in this sequence, we are going to cover entire bacteriology by taking one by one bacteria. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. We have started the first bacteria yesterday, Staphylococcus. Now, today I am going to teach you the second bacteria, Streptococcus. Give me a thumbs up, Rishabh. Give me a thumbs up, anyone else who is listening me live. Give me a thumbs up. So, as I have told you, Staphylococcus and Streptococcus, both are gram-positive cocci. Both are gram-positive cocci. So, gram-positive cocci are two in number. We already know that they are two in number. So, how to differentiate Staphylococcus from Streptococcus? How to differentiate Staphylococcus? Both are gram-positive. Both are cocci. Right. How to differentiate them? So the answer is catalase test. There is a test, there is an enzyme which is known as catalase enzyme, right? Catalase enzyme is present in staphylococcus and catalase enzyme is absent in streptococcus. So the first test to be performed to differentiate the two gram positive cocci is catalase. Give me a thumbs up. So there are two gram positive cocci, staphylococcus, streptococcus. If you want to differentiate them, perform catalase test. See whether in catalase test we we analyze we see whether the enzyme catalase is present inside the bacteria yes or no so if catalase is present the answer is staphylococcus and if catalase is absent the answer is streptococcus right so that is the first test which differentiates staphylococcus 
and streptococcus between two gram positive foci that you must understand that now the second difference uh, as you can see the two diagrams both of them are foci as i have told you both of them are foci both of them are gram positive gram positive means they are violet or blue in color foci means they are spherical circular in shape now can you see these are also spherical and circular in shape they are and these are also spherical or circular in shape see the arrangement here the arrangement in the bunches they are present in bunches like the grapes grapes bunches right angur ke gucche jaisa hai they are branches of the grapes and here they are present in chains they are present in chains right so the summary is that what is the summary staphylococcus are present in bunches streptococcus are present in chains so that is the first thing you should understand staphylococcus are positive for catalase enzyme streptococcus are negative for catalase enzyme how to perform catalase test i will come on that don't worry i will come on that give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up till now till now you got my point okay so this is the way i teach bacteriology in a unique way you will say ma'am what is unique in that the unique is that i am going to teach you 40 bacteria one by one all 40 bacteria i will teach you one by one so in this page only three bacteria are shown my page is not so big now so i can tell you all 40 bacteria together but i advise all my students to take a big sheet and divide the sheet into multiple columns how many are possible take big big columns and uh, compare all the bacteria which are in ambivius syllabus in a comparative manner right so take the first bacteria step aureus i guess you have filled this table yesterday the first column is filled yesterday yesterday i have taken a table uh, lecture on step aureus today i am expecting you to fill the table for streptococcus the more there are many streptococcus i will teach you the complete classification of streptococcus there are many many but the most important among them is streptococcus pyogens so you have to fill the table for streptococcus pyogens pneumococcus is also a streptococcus it is also a type of streptococcus only but a special bacteria so i will teach you pneumococcus separately so pneumococcus is also a streptococcus but i will teach you this separately everyone give me a thumbs up if till now you got the point if till now you got the point give me a thumbs up so i am assuming that you are filling this table the second column today with me what are the headings you already know in the introduction i will tell you the name of the scientist who have discovered the bacteria i will tell you the complete classification of that Uh, that bacteria morphology i will tell you three things whether the bacteria is capsulated yes or no whether the bacteria is motile yes or no or whether the bacteria is spore forming yes or no for all bacteria you have to give these three answers in the simplified manner i will teach you here culture i will enumerate the various culture media and one one word on each not the detail the most important word on which mcq is asked then i will give you a list of biochemical reaction of that particular bacteria and give you the answers of that biochemical reaction antigenic structure resistance is not very important where wherever it is important i will let you know otherwise you can skip the resistance virulence factors are very very important pathogenesis in pathogenesis you have to tell me the name of the diseases which is caused by that bacteria so staphylococcus cause what 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 streptococcus cause what 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 name the diseases along with the symptoms of the diseases not only this after that lab diagnosis lab diagnosis you are a doctor now so ask the patient to do this 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 test what lab diagnosis you will offer your patient what is the specimen you will you would like to take for your patient in what specimen whether the specimen is blood whether it is csf whether it is urine whether it is stool whether it is feces what is your specimen and in that specimen what test you will offer so you should know about the lab diagnosis after lab diagnosis you will not leave your patient you will treat your patient you are a doctor now you will treat your patient so what is the drug of choice for that particular bacteria for that particular disease of that particular bacteria not only this in future that thing will not repeat you will you will ask for the prophylaxis you will tell the prophylaxis to your patient so this is the complete story for all bacteria you know these sequences you know this table for all bacteria anyways my current topic is streptococcus so let me start with streptococcus so we all know streptococcus ka introduction start writing start writing in the table so all the students my dear students who are watching me live or who will watch me in the recorded version please i request all of them to take a notebook right now while watching the later so right now you take your notebook you take your pen and start filling this table while watching the lecture i will give you sufficient time don't worry so i will not do the hurry right i will give you sufficient time you just start making this table with me otherwise baat to kabhi nahi aata if you say ki abhi to madam ka lecture watch kar lete hain and later on we will we will make these tables later on no 
you have to do it now anyways in the introduction write down we all know these are gram positive foci only two gram positive foci are there staphylococcus streptococcus they they are present in chains basically they are present in chains so who is the scientist who has discovered it so the name of the scientist is bill roth it is discovered by bill roth why it is known as strepto strepto ka matlab kya hota hai strepto means twisted twisted or coiled like a chain right streptococcus so they are occurring in chains so name the scientist who has discovered staphylococcus and name the scientist who has discovered streptococcus in the introduction basically you have to write both of them are gram positive foci gram positive foci and the name of the scientist who has discovered them can anyone tell me yesterday's scientist the name of the scientist who has discovered step or yes anyone any one of you the name of the scientist was alexander yesterday i taught you very clearly and here i am telling you the name of the scientist is bill roth now for all important bacteria you learn the name of the scientist you cannot learn for all bacteria you will get confused but the important discoveries you should know so i will tell you the name of the scientist in all bacteria so that in comparative manner you will have an analysis and if the same question is coming in mcq from the four options you can easily pick up the name right so here the name of the scientist is bilrock now do the comparison in comparative manner it will be easy if you study it separately staphylococcus separately streptococcus separately you will forget everything but if you do it in comparison you will always remember it everyone give me a thumbs up should i proceed so after that let me move on the next heading classification classification so streptococcus ko kaise classify karna hai first the first thing you differentiate streptococcus from staphylococcus the first thing both of them have gram positive foci so perform a catalase test based on the catalase test only you decide whether it is staphylococcus or streptococcus both of them are gram positive foci if catalase is present it is staphylococcus if it is absent it is streptococcus now among streptococcus how you will do further division how you will do further division we will do further division based on four criteria one by one so among streptococcus now these all are streptococcus these all are catalase negative we have already performed the catalase test to differentiate them from staphylococcus these all are catalase negative that's why these all are uh, these all are streptococcus now the first thing you have to do is see whether what is the oxygen requirement they are aerobes and they are either they are aerobes or obligate anaerobes based on the oxygen requirement you divide them if they are obligate anaerobes obligate anaerobes means they cannot tolerate oxygen in presence of oxygen they will die so these are pepto streptococcus these are pepto it is a type of streptococcus it is known as pepto streptococcus i am not going to teach you pepto streptococcus it is not there in your ambivalent syllabus in detail right but you should know the name it is a type of streptococcus which is obligate anaerobe anaerobe in presence of oxygen it will die the other streptococcus which are either aerobes they they require oxygen or facultative anaerobes means preferably they they are anaerobes but in presence of oxygen they will not die they can survive in presence of oxygen also so these we, we will further divide them based on the second criteria what is the second criteria based on hemolysis of blood agar on blood agar see the hemolysis on blood agar three type of hemolysis is there alpha hemolysis beta hemolysis and gamma hemolysis i will tell you what are the three type of hemolysis alpha hemolysis is partial hemolysis on blood agar beta hemolysis is complete hemolysis on blood agar and gamma hemolysis is no hemolysis on blood agar so that you have to see whether the hemolysis is partial or complete though. so based on hemolytic activity first understand i will come on this slide again to continue the classification first understand hemolysis so hemolysis is seen on blood agar which blood agar horse blood ki sheep blood ki human blood which blood which animal blood so usually we take 5% horse blood agar 5% horse blood agar it is a blood agar and we grow the colonies on them so these all are the colonies of streptococcus these all are colonies of streptococcus on blood agar there are three type of hemolysis alpha beta and gamma you should understand what is the meaning of them alpha hemolysis beta hemolysis and gamma hemolysis you can see the red color plate the red color plate is the blood agar now see now see i will show you the three so let me start with beta beta as i have told you beta is complete beta hemolysis is complete hemolysis see so can you see a colony this is the colony so uh, okay can you see a blood agar yes you all can see a blood agar on the blood agar can you appreciate the colonies these are the colonies of the bacteria okay i can appreciate the colonies the colonies are creamy in color they are whitish creamy multiple convex colonies are there okay i am not interested in colonies the colony contain the bacteria a group of bacteria a cluster of the bacteria 
around the colony let me zoom out let me zoom out few colonies so this is the zoom version of few colonies of the same diagram so can you see a colony here can you see a colony here i am interested in the zone around the colony so this is the zone around the colony can you appreciate this zone the zone around the colony so here i am telling you a group of bacteria is present in the colony what is the colony in the colony multiple bacteria are present all of them are streptococcus it is a streptococcus colony so the bacteria will start doing the hemolysis of rbc so it is a blood agar now blood agar contain rbc so rbc around the colony undergo lysis undergo bursting so on the blood agar rbcs are present rbcs are intact on the blood agar normal blood agar rbcs are intact but wherever colony is present the bacteria in the colony causes bursting of the rbc around them so a, a zone is formed can you see this zone this zone this is the zone of hemolysis this is the zone of hemo hemo means rbc hemo ka matlab hota hai rbc lysis matlab they are destroyed they are bursted so rbc around the colony are bursted and it is complete hemolysis complete what do you mean by complete all the rbcs present in zone they are bursted all the rbcs whatever rbcs let me draw few rbcs so these are the rbcs present on the blood agar they all are bursted by the bacteria so in this zone whatever rbcs are present they are bursted so there is a there is a zone can you see there is a zone so what is that zone tell me the name of that zone so this is complete hemolysis complete hemolysis and it looks like a no rbc is visible on microscopy in this zone there is a clear zone this zone is a clear zone so have you got it give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up that is beta hemolysis what is alpha hemolysis alpha hemolysis is partial hemolysis around the colony so around the colony again so imagine this is the colony again around the colony there is partial hemolysis means some rbcs are lysed some are not lysed so here are multiple rbcs some of them are lysed some of them are not lysed it is partial hemolysis so it looks it looks like a greenish zone it looks like a green color zone around the colony so alpha hemolysis mein the colony ke around you will get a green zone it is partial hemolysis and in beta hemolysis around the colony you will get a clear zone not green zone it is the complete hemolysis you got my point you got my point so that is alpha beta alpha beta can you see this is clear zone around the colonies appreciate the colonies and around each colony appreciate the clear zone it is beta hemolysis it is beta hemolysis and gamma hemolysis means no hemolysis no hemolysis around the colonies so you will get the colonies the colonies are there but around the colonies there is no zone no rbc is destroyed so based on that so let me take a blood agar let me take a clear slide let me let me draw blood agar on the blood agar all the rbcs are present on the blood agar all the rbcs are present blood agar contains rbc of course so there are three type of streptococcus some show alpha hemolysis some show beta hemolysis some show there are three type of bacteria not streptococcus some show gamma hemolysis alpha beta gamma what do you mean by that it what is the meaning of hemolysis hemolysis means destruction of the rbc so you have to see around the around the colony around the colony if you are getting greenish zone or around the colony you are getting a clear zone or around the colony you are getting no zone you are getting no zone no zone around the colony so that is the meaning you got my point say yes or no if you got my point here alpha means partial hemolysis some of the rbcs are destroyed some are not destroyed beta means complete hemolysis all the rbcs in the zone are destroyed and gamma means no hemolysis none of the rbcs none of the rbcs in the zone is destroyed so there is no zone at all zone hi nahi hai so give me a thumbs up if you got the meaning of the hemolysis everyone give me a thumbs up right everyone you got my point everyone got my point so let me come on the classification again so where is the slide here here we were so let me see if i can see your chat you have to give me a minute if i can see your chat just a second only one minute yes i can see your chat i guess i can see your chat okay so can you see here we were here we were so uh, uh, based on the hemolysis based on the hemolysis there are three type of streptococcus some show alpha hemolysis some show beta some show gamma the one who show alpha hemolysis and gamma hemolysis i will teach you these things later on the most important are beta beta means complete hemolysis so among the beta we will do the third criteria we will see their cell wall we will see the cell wall of the bacteria in the cell wall of the bacteria there is a carbohydrate the name of the carbohydrate is group c carbohydrate so based on the group c carbohydrate there are 21 type of group c carbohydrate in the cell wall so they are divided into 21 types 
this 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 classification this one group c carbohydrate basis classification is done by a scientist the name of the scientist is lansfield that's why it is known as lansfield lansfield classification so the beta 1 are divided into 21 types not alpha 1 not gamma 1 beta 1 are divided into 21 types what is the basis of classification basis of classification is a group c carbohydrate which is present in the cell wall of the bacteria what is the name of these 21 types so 21 types are named a to h a b c d e f g h to r to ye ho gaye g h there is no i there is no j from k onwards again start till w and count them they are total 21 so you count a b c d e f till w till w you count it it will be 21 it will be 21 among them most important is a the most important is a which is known as streptococcus pyogens the most important which is my hero today which i am going to teach you in detail streptococcus pyogens is group a beta streptococcus it is not alpha it is not gamma it is beta and in beta it is a so group a beta streptococcus ka naam hai streptococcus pyogens now further we will divide this the group a into multiple types based on a protein in the cell wall currently in the last classification we have taken a carbohydrate in the cell wall the name of the carbohydrate is a group c carbohydrate now I am taking a protein in the cell wall, not carbohydrate, in the cell wall only. It is also present in the cell wall, it is also present in the cell wall. In the cell wall a protein is present, the name of the protein is M protein. Based on that, we will divide group A, uh, beta streptococcus, that is streptococcus pyogens into 90 types, into 90 different types. This classification is done by another scientist, the name of the scientist is Griffith. So that's why it is known as Griffith classification. Everyone give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up i am drawing the classification in front of you again so you take streptococcus the complete streptococcus first you differentiate streptococcus from staphylococcus based on catalase test so the first test you have to perform is catalase test if they are catalase positive they are staphylococcus if they are catalase negative they are streptococcus so all streptococcus are catalase negative on every point you have to give me a thumbs up then only I will continue, right? So once you have taken the streptococcus, the first test you have to perform is oxygen requirement. Based on oxygen requirement, you will see whether they are aerobes and facultative anaerobes or they are obligate anaerobes. Anaerobes, right? Obligate anaerobes. If they are obligate anaerobes, if they are obligate anaerobes, they are known as pacto streptococcus i am not going to teach you these in detail Pactos, but you should know the name pacto streptococcus are a type of streptococcus which are anaerobes i am going to teach you aerobic streptococcus the aerobic one we will do further classification the second way of classifying is based on hemolysis on blood agar hemolysis on the basis of hemolysis on blood agar they are of three type alpha hemolysis beta hemolysis gamma hemolysis i am going to teach you alpha and gamma also but later on the most important group here is beta. Beta means complete hemolysis. You already know. You already know the meaning of alpha, beta and gamma. Beta hemolysis is complete hemolysis. So I am going to teach you beta hemolytic streptococcus. Now beta hemolytic streptococcus are further divided. All beta 1. They are further divided based on the group C carbohydrate component. Carbohydrate component in the cell wall. Based on this they are divided into 21 types. This is done by a scientist. The name of the scientist is Lansfield. That's why known as Lansfield classification. Lansfield has classified group B, uh, sorry, beta, beta streptococcus into 21 types, right? And th this is Lansfield classification and um, uh, they, are, they are named from A to W. A to uh, A, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and then K to W. So total A to W, there are 21 in number. So I am interested in A. I am not interested in all. A is most important. So group A, beta hemolytic streptococcus. What is the complete name of A? A is group A. It is group A. It is group A, group B, group C. So group A, total 21 are there. 21 means I am taking the first one. Group A, which is a beta hemolytic streptococcus. It is a beta hemolytic streptococcus. It is not alpha, it is not gamma. It is group A, beta hemolytic streptococcus. It is known as streptococcus pyogens. Further, I will divide it in, based on the M protein in the cell wall, not carbohydrate, M protein. This classification is done by another scientist which is known as Griffith. And Griffith has divided based on the M protein in the cell wall into 90 different types. 90 different types into, they are known as 1, 2, 3, 4, till 90 they are. So they are not named, they are numbered. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone, I tried my best 
everyone give me a thumbs up so this is how we do the classification this is how we are doing the classification so first thing we are taking the hemolytic so what are the criteria of classification first we are taking oxygen requirement in consideration after that we are taking hemolysis in consideration after that we are taking carbohydrate component of the cell wall group c carbohydrate in consideration and in the end we are taking protein in the cell wall m protein in consideration based on these criteria we are going to divide 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 and divide everyone give me a thumbs up you got my point so first is hemolytic activity i have told you what is alpha what is beta what is gamma i guess everyone got it i guess everyone got it now i have already told you beta in beta we first divide them into 21 types from a to w and then then the a1 is divided into 90 types that i have already told you the a1 is known as streptococcus pyogens and it is further divided into 90 different types in beta but what about alpha and gamma what about alpha and gamma the alpha one they form greenish partial hemolysis and greenish discoloration zone is there around the colony in alpha there are two bacteria which i will teach you i will teach you streptococcus pneumonia and streptococcus viridiums both i will teach you so alpha bhi padhaungi main beta mein se sirf ek hi padhaungi group a group a not a to w all i will teach you uh, i will not teach you all 21 i will teach you the first one group a that is streptococcus pyogens i am going to teach you from beta beta mein total 21 hai 21 mein se the first a to w total 21 hai the a1 is further divided into 90 types i will teach you a in detail the name of the a is streptococcus pyogens i will teach you one from alpha i will teach you two bacteria streptococcus pneumoniae and streptococcus viridiens and in gamma in gamma there is enterococcus it is known as enterococcus right uh, initially it was included in beta only but nowadays it is separate so anthropocus ke bare mein bhi thoda sa bataungi so i will teach you all alpha beta gamma i will start with beta first i will teach you streptococcus pyogens group a then i will move on alpha that is streptococcus pneumonia and viridiens in the end i will teach you gamma everyone give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up you got my point say yes or no say yes or no so based on the lens field what is lens field classification lens field classification is based on a carbohydrate in the cell wall group c carbohydrate based on which it is it is divided into 21 types what is the name of the 21 types a to w group a group b group c group d without i and j a to w may i and j if you count from a to w total 23 letters are there but don't include i and j so there will be 21 letters so these are the 21 types give me a thumbs up so these are known as lens field lens field group a b c d e f like likewise I am going to teach you A in detail. A, A, right? So you can see this is the diagram of the cell wall. This is the diagram of the cell wall of the bacteria. The outer one, this is the capsule. Don't look at the capsule. In the cell wall, we have carbohydrate, we have protein. We have both things. We have carbohydrate also and we have protein. The blue one is the M protein. And this orange one, you can see the orange one is the, uh, the red one, the middle one is the carbohydrate. The orange one is the peptidoglycan content. So we can see the cell wall these things are present right and Griffith classification you already know the group A1 group A jo hai lens field ka group A ko Griffith ne divide kiya lens field ka group A which is known as streptococcus pyogen based on the protein in the cell wall there are three type of protein MTR main main classification is based on protein M lekin protein T or protein R bhi hai it is divided into sorry not 90 it is 80 types I got confused it is 80 different types type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 so that is the thing give me a thumbs up now this is the complete story in front of you this is the complete story in front of you again see from some other book this is the same classification given in front of you so take streptococcus based on the oxygen requirement divide them based on the oxygen requirement divide them into two categories the aerobes the anaerobes the anaerobes are the anaerobes are peptidoglycan or peptostreptococcus i will not teach you these the aerobic one are important the aerobic one are further divided based on hemolytic activity based on hemolytic activity they are divided into three categories alpha beta and gamma i guess you know the meaning of them the alpha may viridians or pneumonia do aayenge gamma may anthrococcus aayega i will teach you these later on but the beta one is the most important beta one is further divided in by uh, two scientists so the first scientist is Lansfield, Lansfield grouping. The second classification is Griffith grouping. So Lansfield and Griffith are the two scientists who has divided the beta one. So first Lansfield has divided. Lansfield has divided based on group C carbohydrate in the cell wall. It has divided into 21 types. Read the name of 21 types. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. There is no I, there is no J. K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W. Till W it is there. Everyone give me a thumbs up. If you count, they are 21. The most important is group A, which is the most important here. 
the name of group A is, a is streptococcus pyogens. Now, Griffith has divided this group A into 80 different types from 1 till 80. Give me a thumbs up. I'm crystal clear in my concepts, I guess. Right. So, okay. Okay. So, I will show you this table later on. Now, I'm, I, so the first test, there is a gram positive cocci. In my slide, if I'm getting any gram positive cocci, I'm having two options. Either it is Staphylococcus or it is Streptococcus. So, the test which differentiates Staphylococcus and Streptococcus is catalyst. I have told you this many times. If it is catalyst positive, it is Staphylococcus. If it is catalyst negative, it is Streptococcus. Now, Streptococcus may the second thing. It is an approach. How I am approaching? The second thing I will do is the hemolysis on the blood agar. Based on the hemolysis of blood agar, I will decide whether it is alpha, alpha streptococcus, beta streptococcus or gamma streptococcus. Right. In alpha, two are important, pneumonia and viridans. In beta, many are there from group A till W, 21 types are there. Right. And in gamma, also many are there. How to differentiate between them, the important one. So, there are many tests, many tests which differentiate among them. So, we will study these tests in the end. I will show you this table. Let me teach you these bacteria individually. This is the approach. This is known as approach. How to approach a case of gram positive cocci. This is very, very important for your clinical question. In, in microbiology also, nowadays you are getting clinical MCQs in which you are getting a big clinical scenario. Right. So, in which the clues are given to you. So, there is a patient having a postulated lesion. The pus is present. So, a patient is having fever, pain, this, that. You have taken the specimen as pus. So, in the lab, microbiologists found that it is a gram positive cocci. Right. It is catalase negative. Right. It is PYR positive. It is positive for bile. So, multiple tests will be given to you. Based on that, you have to come on the conclusion. What is the, what is the infective organism for that, for that particular case? So, big clinical questions are important for which this approach is really important. Give me a thumbs up. So, step by step, you have to jump. All positive findings as well as negative findings in your clinical questions are important. In your clinical questions, sometimes negative findings are given. So, it is negative for this, this test. It is negative for catalyst. So, you will say negative at the QDI. If it is positive, it should be important. Why negative is given? If it is negative, it is important. It is showing that it is a gram positive cocci, but negative for catalyst. Means it is streptococcus. So, it is ruling out something. It is not staphylococcus. So, negative findings are equally important as positive findings. That is my point here. You got my point? So, these all bacteria, streptococcus, I am going to teach you in detail one by one today only. I will start with the first one, group A. Group A is very important. There are 21 groups. Group A, B, C, D is very important. So, I am going to teach you in detail group A only. Group A is streptococcus pyogens. Group B is streptococcus aljectaceae. I will teach you few lines about B, not in detail. C ke baare mein bhi few lines. This C is streptococcus equisi millet. I cannot teach you group A to W all, all 21. I can teach you only the important one. Right? So, A, B, C, D padhaongi. A, B, C, D are beta, beta, beta. Alpha mein se, I will teach you viridans. Alpha mein do hai, viridans and pneumonia. I will teach you both. So, let me start. So, based on classification, there are many questions. If you got the classification, of streptococcus i would like to launch some polls some mcqs which are already asked in your previous year question papers of neat pg fmg and dynasty are you ready for the polls based on the classification if you got the classification then only you can answer it correctly if you didn't got the classification you cannot answer it are you ready for the polls have you got the classification mev vlog rishab abhijit what about others who are watching me live okay so this is the first question i want everyone to participate at max, you will be wrong. It's okay. It's okay. In my class, it's okay if you are wrong. Don't worry about that. But you have to participate. Participation is important. Right? So, at least you, you may try. Right? So, on blood agar, which of the following type of hemolysis is produced by streptococcus pyogens? Streptococcus pyogens. We know streptococcus produce three type of hemolysis. It can produce alpha hemolysis also, beta also, gamma also. So, streptococcus pyogens produce which type of hemolysis? What is your answer? Does it produce alpha hemolysis? Means partial hemolysis. Beta means complete hemolysis. Gamma means no hemolysis or none of the above. What do you want to say for this question? Anyone want to tell me the correct answer? Let me see your chat. Yeah, I can see your chat. Who will tell me the correct answer here? Rishabh, you are absolutely right. What about others? Rishabh Kumar is right. What about others? Others don't want to tell me the correct answer? What is the correct answer here? The correct answer here is, of course, it is beta hemolysis, right? So, in the classification, you may have seen that we are dividing 
the streptococcus based on based on hemolysis on blood agar and we are dividing into 23 uh, types alpha hemolysis beta hemolysis gamma hemolysis what are the examples in alpha there are two bacteria streptococcus viridans and streptococcus pneumoniae pneumonia in beta there are 21 types based on the group c carbohydrate a b c d till w so a1 is group the, the question which is asked a group a group a streptococcus pyogens so you and in gamma there is enterococcus enterococcus so what is the question asked you tell me what is the question asked the question is asked about streptococcus pyogens which is group a group a uh, streptococcus so it is showing beta that's why the answer is beta yes mav block you are also right the answer is beta i am changing the question you tell me if i change the question what will be the answer i am changing the question a little bit instead of streptococcus pyogens i am making it streptococcus viridans what is your answer now what is your answer now from alpha beta gamma the same options a b c d are in front of you so rishab mev what is your answer now so question can be anything you should know the complete classification yes yes abhijit very good now if i'm asking the same question for streptococcus viridans you can see it is alpha so the correct answer will be alpha yes mev very good the correct answer will be alpha in this case in this case have you got it give me a thumbs up i'm again changing the question again instead of streptococcus viridans streptococcus pyogens i am asking streptococcus pneumoniae streptococcus pneumoniae what is your answer now abhijit mev rishab what is your answer now for streptococcus pneumonia what what would you like to say is it alpha beta or gamma what is it yes you all are right so pneumonia is also alpha so again the answer will be alpha so you should understand that question can be on anything you should know the complete classification that is my point right so coming to the next question next question is very easy and repeated many times in your previous year question papers in various exams right c carbohydrate component in the streptococcus hemolyticus is important for which classification the c carbohydrate component is important for lansfield classification is important for phagocytic inhibition is important for toxin production or is important for hemolysis on the blood agar the c component c carbohydrate component in the cell wall why it is important it is important for which thing you all are right very good rishab abhijit mev why only three students are participating what about others you didn't got the concept yes so c carbohydrate component in the cell wall is important for lens field classification so the correct answer here is a you know so based on c component c carbohydrate component lens field has classified uh, the streptococcus into 21 types so name them a to w till from starting from group a group b group c group d till w right excluding i and g this is the next question in front of you the same question with a different language the same question i guess with a different language lansfield grouping of streptococcus is done by using what what is the criteria for lansfield grouping lansfield grouping ka criteria kya hai what is the criteria is it m protein based on m protein he is divided based on group c peptidoglycan content of the cell wall or group c carbohydrate content of the cell wall or staining properties so you have to be very sure and very specific yes abhijit you are right what about others what about others what about others is it m protein which is uh, ba uh, based on which we are classifying is it group c component peptidoglycan con component of the cell wall or is it group c carbohydrate content of the cell wall or is it yes you all are right the correct answer is b so don't learn only group c it is group c pep not peptidoglycan it is group c carbohydrate content so correct answer here is C. I would like to change the question. You may be knowing what is my next question. In this question, I will change the question. So instead of Lansfield grouping, I want to ask Griffith grouping. Griffith group, grouping. So what is the answer now? Griffith is another scientist now who has also given the contribution in, in classification of streptococcus. So Griffith grouping of streptococcus is done by using what criteria? What is the answer now? The same four options are in front of you. Is it M protein? Is it group C peptidoglycan content of the cell wall or is it staining protein properties? What is the answer? Yes, Rishabh, you are right. Abhijit, you are right. Yes, so it is correct. It is M protein in the cell wall. So any question can come in your exam. You should be prepared for all. The next question is in front of you. Same question with a different language, I guess. Griffith typing is done for which bacteria? I guess it is the easiest question and everyone must participate in this. So Griffith typing is done for Staphylococcus or Streptococcus or meningococcus or gonococcus so you all know the uh, answer so griffith typing is done for streptococcus if i change the question instead of griffith typing i i ask lensfield grouping the answer is same 
so lansfield and griffith both classification are done for streptococcus yes so correct answer is b and you all are right very 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 good correct answer is b let me start group a let me start group a streptococcus group a beta first we will start with beta then i will come on alpha and gamma beta me there are group a to w i will not teach you all i will teach you only group a b c d a b c d usme bhi detail i will teach you only of a b c d ke bare mein little 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 not in detail so i am going to teach you beta hemolysis in beta hemolysis there are a to w 21 types i cannot teach you all 21 come on so i will teach you a in detail b c d a little bit that is in your syllabus at mbbs level you should know that if you are doing your md in microbiology later on after the post graduation then you have to study all in detail but at mbbs level for your competitive exam need pg fmg inict next that is sufficient after beta i will teach you alpha and gamma also so let's start beta in the beta let's start group a the name of the group a beta is streptococcus pyogens so let me start streptococcus pyogens you got it you got it give me a thumbs up if you got it so let me start streptococcus pyogens which is group a group a beta group a beta streptococcus so i am teaching you beta streptococcus not alpha not gamma in beta it is group a not group b c d till w it is group a so this is the another name of streptococcus pyogens group a beta streptococcus you got my point you got my point introduction you already know who has discovered it the name of the scientist is griffith uh, i am sorry uh, bill roth the name of the scientist is bill roth bill roth has discovered it bill roth staph aureus was discovered by alexander streptococcus was discovered by bill roth classification you already know i uh, yesterday i have taught you the classification of staph aureus and today i have told you a big classification the complete classification of streptococcus you know the four ways of classifying first based on oxygen requirement then based on hemolysis on blood agar then based on group c carbohydrate component in the cell wall and then based on m protein in the cell wall so one by one we will apply the filters these are the four filters the four way of classifying the streptococcus you should know the classification complete classification give me a thumbs up after classification let me start with morphology now the next heading is morphology give me a thumbs up should i start morphology in morphology you have to tell me three things what are the three things you have to tell me whether streptococcus pyogenes is capsulated yes or no whether it is spore forming yes or no yes or no or whether it is motile yes or no who will tell me who will tell me the answer of all three is no 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 it is non capsulated non spore forming non motile now you should say that ma'am it is difficult for us to learn for all 40 bacteria as i have told you in your syllabus there are nearly 40 important bacteria which you have to learn in a comparative manner right now it is difficult for you to understand or to learn which of them are capsulated yes or no which of them are spore forming yes or no which of them are motile yes or no for streptococcus pyogenes it is easy because all three are negative non capsulated non spore forming non motile but in various bacteria various combinations are there some of them are capsulated but non spore forming non motile some of them are non capsulated but spore forming non motile so various combinations are possible it's difficult to learn the sequence of the three things give me a thumbs up if, if you got my trouble you got my problem what is the problem students face you may also facing this problem so let me simplify this concepts once for all once for all for all bacteria in bacteriology i am go going to give you now three mnemonics i am giving you three mnemonics what are the three mnemonics i am going to teach you the capsulated bacteria out of the 40 bacteria in your syllabus or all bacteria in, in your syllabus only nine bacteria are capsulated remaining are non capsulated so learn the name of those nine with the help of a mnemonic right out of all the bacteria in the world only four bacteria form spores rest all do not form spore so learn the name of those four bacteria rest all are obviously non spore forming right and out of all the bacteria in the world only 12 are motile only 12 motility bhi do tarike se hoti hai 12 are motile 6 are motile by polar flagella and 6 are motile by peritrichous flagella there are two types of flagella so you should learn the name separately so all 12 are motile i agree but 6 are motile by polar flagella and the remaining 6 are motile by peritrichous so i will give you two different mnemonics here so you have to learn the mnemonics and you have to apply the, the these three or four mnemonics for all bacteria just suppose currently i am teaching you streptococcus so see whether streptococcus is coming in this mnemonic yes or no if it is not coming it is non capsulated whether streptococcus is coming in this mnemonic yes or no if it is not coming it is non spore forming whether streptococcus is coming in these two mnemonics yes or no if it is not uh, not coming it is non not uh, motile and various combinations can be possible everyone give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up so abhijit rishab 
and maybe you got my point should i proceed ahead should i tell you these mnemonics will it be useful for you let me start with the first mnemonic capsule capsule forming bacteria for for um, staphylococcus uh, for streptococcus all three are negative first learn all three are negative then i will give you the mnemonics also it is non motile non spore forming and uh, capsule is usually absent non capsulated but few few strains few strains contain capsule capsule is made up of hyaluronic acid if it is present otherwise it is absent so basically it is non capsulated non spore forming and non motile few of the strains have capsule which is made up of hyaluronic acid this is the summary so this is the summary for our bacteria in concern jo hamara bacteria hai abhi so and this is the diagram of the morphology can you see multiple streptococcus are shown streptococcus are gram positive cocci now see the diagram is beautiful in the diagram itself it is depicted it is gram positive because they are shown by blue color they are not shown by red color gram positive are blue or violet color and gram negative are red color which color bacteria are these i can see the violet color i cannot see the red color so it is already depicted in the diagram no need to say it is gram positive number second it is cocci it is already depicted in the diagram they are cocci they are not bacilli because they are circles they are spheres right and what is the arrangement they are arranged in chains they are arranged in chains big big chains they are not in clusters they are in chains you can you can compare the staphylococcus with streptococcus both of them are circle both of them are spheres but see the arrangement see the arrangement here the arrangement is in bunches that is staphylococcus and here the arrangement is in chains that is streptococcus currently we are concerned with streptococcus give me a thumbs up both of them are gram positive cocci right now let me give you the three mnemonics one by one so let me give you the first mnemonic capsulated bacteria as i have told you only nine bacteria in the world are capsulated what are those nine bacteria so there is a mnemonic for that the mnemonic is pakeb mcv let me write it paki pakeb mcv pronounce it clearly in in pathology we have mcv mch mchc you know to classify anemias so mcv pak pakeb learn the mnemonic like that you can make some other mnemonic also so here in this mnemonic p stands for pneumococcus a stands for bacillus anthrax k stands for klebsiella i stands for influenza y stands for yersinia b stands for bordetella not borrelia right m stands for meningococcus so we have pneumococcus we have meningococcus right c stands for clostridium but only two clostridium not all clostridium number one clostridium perfringens and second clostridium clostridium butyricum it is not clostridium titani clostridium titani is non capsulated and clostridium difficile is also not non capsulated but clostridium perfringens and butyricum are are capsulated v is vibrio but not the main vibrio main vibrio is vibrio cholerae it is not vibrio cholerae it is vibrio parahemolyticus give me a thumbs up so how many bacteria in the world are capsulated only nine bacteria in the world are capsulated can you name them yes you can name them the mnemonic is pakeb m c v can you see the full form yes you all can see the full form what is p pneumococcus a anthrax k klebsiella a hemophilus influenzae influenzae ka i hai y yersinia b me confusion ho sakta hai borrelia ki bordetella it is bordetella borrelia nahi hai borrelia is non capsulated m is meningococcus c is clostridium but not all clostridium only two clostridium clostridium perfringens and clostridium butyricum Clostridium titani and difficile यहाँ नहीं है, they are non-capsulated. So four clostridium are important in your syllabus. I am going to teach you four clostridium when I will come on that chapter. So out of the four, two are capsulated, two are non-capsulated. Clostridium perfringens and butyricum are non-capsulated. Titani and uh, difficile and remaining all clostridium are non-capsulated. Vibrio, it is not the main Vibrio cholerae. It is Vibrio parahemolyticus. Give me a thumbs up. So if you know that now, is Staphylococcus coming? My chapter is Staphylococcus. I am teaching you stepa. Uh, sorry, streptococcus today. My chapter is streptococcus. Is streptococcus coming in this mnemonic? No, no. So my answer is that streptococcus is non-capsulated. Any bacteria not coming in this mnemonic is non-capsulated. So only nine bacteria are capsulated. Remaining all are non-capsulated. Give me a thumbs up. So that is about the capsulated. Come on, spore-forming bacteria. How many bacteria form spore in the world? There are only four bacteria in the world which form spores. What are the name of the four bacteria which form spores? Only four bacteria in the world form the spores. So the mnemonic is BSC chemistry. BSC chemistry. BSC chemistry. So let me tell you the full form of BSC chemistry. B stands for bacillus. 
Bacillus anthrax also, subtilus also, all bacillus, bacillus. S stands for sporosarcina. Naam mein hai sporo. To spores to banai gai na. Sporosarcina is a bacteria which forms spores. C is clostridia. Now here all, all clostridia are there. All four clostridia. So out of the four clostridia, two are capsulated, two are non-capsulated. But all four are spore forming. So clostridium titani, clostridium difficile, clostridium perfringens, clostridium butyricum. All clostridium are spore forming. Another C. There are two C na. Coxiella. Coxiella burnuti. Coxiella burnuti. Give me a thumbs up. So that is the full form of four spore forming. Is streptococcus coming in this mnemonic? My chapter is streptococcus. Streptococcus I am going to teach you now. So streptococcus coming in this mnemonic? No, it is not. S is there. BSC chemistry ka jo S hai. It is not streptococcus. It is sporosarcina. So you should know the full form. So streptococcus is non-spore forming. Streptococcus is non-capsulated, non-spore forming. Let me come on motility. As I have told you for motility, two types of uh, flagella are there. Let me draw a bacteria. This is a bacteria. This is a bacteria. If any bacteria wants to move, it requires a flagella. Now, there are two types of flagella. Either the flagella present at a pole. It is known as polar flagella. Or the flagella is present all around the bacteria. All around the bacteria. It is known as peritricus. Peri means all around. Peritricus flagella. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. So, both these bacteria will be motile. Both these bacteria will be motile. This one is motile by polar flagella. And this one is motile by peritricus flagella. So, there are six bacteria who have polar flagella. They are motile by polar flagella. And there are six bacteria who are motile by peritricus flagella. They are also. So, total 12 bacteria in the world are motile. But you should know separate list for them. Because MCQs are very specific. Which of the following bacteria is motile by polar flagella? You should not only know the name of the 12. Concept kisse motile hai ye bhi pata hona chahiye. So, I will give you two mnemonics now. One mnemonic is for peritricus flagella and one mnemonic is for polar flagella. Right. Peritricus ka mnemonic is six. Six are there na. As I told you six bacteria. So, cute, baby, sleep. S-L-E-P. Only one E. Double E nahi hai. Cute, baby, sleep. Say the full form. C stands for clostridia. All clostridia are motile by peritricus flagella except perfringes and titani. These two are non-motile. Rest all are motile. Right. B is bacillus. All bacillus are motile except the main one, bacillus anthrax. S is salmonella. All salmonella are motile except salmonella gallorum pullorum. Right. L is listeria. E is E. coli. And P is proteus. Please have a look. Ye bohot important hai. Sirf is chapter ke liye nahi. Complete microbiology ke liye these mnemonics are very important. Please, please understand. That is peritricus flagella. What about polar flagella? Who will tell me the mnemonic for polar flagella? Very protective solution HCl, hydrochloric acid. This is the mnemonic for polar flagella. Say the full form. V means Vibrio. P means Pseudomonas. S means Parochetes. H means Helicobacter pylori. Helicobacter ka bada bhai Campylobacter. So Helicobacter, Campylobacter, both brothers are there. And L is Legionella. L is legionella. Give me a thumbs up. So, total. So, what is the summary? Is staphylococcus coming? Uh, my chapter is streptococcus. Is streptococcus coming in this mnemonic? No. There is S. But S is salmonella. Sleep ka S salmonella hai. Streptococcus nahi hai. Right. Is streptococcus coming in this mnemonic? Yaha pe bhi ek S hai. But this S is spirochetes. It is not streptococcus. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone means everyone. So, the summary is that streptococcus is non-polar. It is non-capsulated, non-motile, non-polar. Uh, non-motile, non-spore forming. Give me a thumbs up. What is the summary? Let me summarize it. Then come on my table again. So, I have told you a mnemonic for the capsulated bacteria. I have told you a mnemonic for spore forming bacteria. And I have told you two mnemonics for motile bacteria. Motile bacteria are either by polar flagella or they are by peritricus flagella. First, tell me the numbers. Who will tell me the numbers? Capsulated bacteria are 9 in number. Spore forming bacteria are 4 in number. Motile bacteria are 12 in number. 6 by polar and 6 by peritricus. Now tell me the mnemonics. Who will tell me the mnemonics? Abhijit, MEB, Creative, Rishabh, anyone else who is watching me live. I cannot see the names. I can see the names who is chatting with me. Otherwise, I cannot see your names. So, who will tell me the mnemonics? Please write down. Capsulated bacteria. Tell me the name of the 9 bacteria who are capsulated. What is the mnemonic? The mnemonic is PAKIB. Once you write it here now, you will never forget. So, write down. PAKIB. MCV is the mnemonic. Give me a thumbs up. What is the mnemonic of spore forming bacteria? The mnemonic is BSC chemistry. What is the mnemonic? BSC chemistry is the mnemonic. And what is the mnemonic of motile bacteria? First, polar ka batao. 
वेरी प्रोटेक्टिव सोल्यूशन एच सी एल यस अभिजीत यू आर राइट वेरी प्रोटेक्टिव सोल्यूशन एच सी एल एंड पैरिट्रैकर्स का क्या है क्यूट बेबी स्लीप एस एल ई बी नॉट राइटिंग निमोनिक इज द इजिएस्ट जॉब आई हैव रिटर्न इट आई है इजिएस्ट जॉब It's very easy to write down the mnemonics here on the board, but difficult thing is to say the full form. Difficult thing. What is this P? Is it Pseudomonas? Is it Proteus? Was it what? Is it Pneumococcus? What it is? So P to kuch bhi ho sakta hai. P to kuch bhi ho sakta hai. So there are various, you know, full forms can be possible. What is this S? It is Parokine. It is Staphylococcus. Is it Streptococcus? It is Salmonella. Is it Shigella? So saying full forms are important. That is more important. You got my point. So say the full form again, again, again. Now today. Now how you will learn it? Mnemonic learn करना easy है. But say the full form to your friends, colleagues, batchmates, seniors, juniors. किसी को भी your roommate को पकड़ लो. और यू से कि आज तुझे तीन mnemonic बताता हूँ मैं. तीन mnemonic I will tell you today. Right? And say the full form of these mnemonics. If you say it to someone, now if you teach it to someone, you will never forget. Have you got it? So apply the mnemonic for all bacteria. Currently, what is my chapter? What I am teaching you right now? Right now, I am teaching you Streptococcus. So I am not interested in others. I am interested in Streptococcus. Streptococcus is not coming in this mnemonic. There is no S. No, it is not coming. So it is non-capsulated. Streptococcus is not coming in this. There is a S, but this S is Porosarcina. It is not Streptococcus. So it is not coming in this mnemonic. Streptococcus is not coming in this mnemonic. There is a S, but this S is Salmonella. Salmonella. It is not Streptococcus. So it is not uh, motile by polar flagella. And Streptococcus is not coming in this mnemonic also. There is a S, but this S is pyrochete. It is not Streptococcus. My summary is that Streptococcus is non-capsulated, non-spore forming, non-motile. Neither by polar, neither by peritrichus. Everyone, give me a thumbs up. No one in this world will super simplify the concepts of microbiology like this. What I am doing. So I guess you should you should give me a little bit appreciation. If I'm doing such a hard work for you, so you should give me a little bit appreciation. Give me a thumbs up in the chat box. Yes. So what is the summary? The summary is that in the morphology, what was the morphology of Staph aureus? What was capsule? What was spore? What is motility? What is the morphology here? Tell me the morphology of both Staph aureus and Streptococcus. This is Staphylococcus. This that is Streptococcus. Tell me the morphology of both. Who will tell me? So morphology of both of them is same. Here also the three things were negative. Here also the three things are negative. Non-capsulated, non-spore forming, non-motile. Both of them. Both of them are gram-positive cocci. This is also gram-positive cocci. This is also gram-positive cocci. So only difference in morphology. It occurs in bunches or clusters, and it occurs in chains. That is the only difference in morphology. Everyone, give me a thumbs up. Everyone, everyone, give me a thumbs up. You got my point. Let me come on the next point. Let me come on the next point. The culture media. Let me come on the next point. The culture media of the streptococcus. Streptococcus ki kitni culture media? I will teach you four culture medias of the streptococcus. Enumerate them one by one and write one one line in front of them. So culture media first write down blood agar. First write down blood agar. On the blood agar, which hemolysis is there? I am teaching you which streptococcus. I am teaching you streptococcus pyogenes. Streptococcus ka pyogenes is the streptococcus from beta hemolysis. In the classification only I have told you three type of hemolysis is there. So in the classification only I have told you there is alpha hemolysis, beta hemolysis, gamma hemolysis. In the beta hemolysis there are 21 types. A to W. The A one is streptococcus pyogenes which I am teaching you right now. So it is showing beta hemolysis. On blood agar it is showing beta. Beta means complete. In the complete there is a clear zone. There is a clear zone. Alpha may dusre bacteria hai. Streptococcus viridans, streptococcus pneumoniae that I will teach you later on. Gamma may dusre, dusre streptococcus hai. There is an enterococcus that I will teach you later on. So give me a thumbs up. So on blood agar, the summary is that on blood agar, it shows beta hemolysis. Beta hemolysis. A clear zone of beta hemolysis. Give me a thumbs up. See, see this is the blood agar. On the blood agar, you can see the colonies of streptococcus pyogenes. Streptococcus pyogenes. Group A streptococcus pyogenes. Let me zoom out. Can you see a colony? Yes, you all can see the colonies. Now appreciate the zone around the colonies. Around the colonies, you can see a clear zone. This is a clear zone. So all the RBCs around the colonies, they are lysed. So this is a clear zone. Clear zone around the colonies. Clear zone. This clear zone means the complete hemolysis is there. And this is known as beta hemolysis. That is the summary on blood agar. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Um... Hemolysis will be more if you if you provide 10% CO2. If on the culture plate, if you provide 10% CO2, hemolysis will be more fast. So that you have to learn.
so that is blood agar coming on selective media for all bacteria you should know the selective media if you don't know the selective media for all 40 bacteria you cannot clear your exam you should know selective media at the tip of your tongue what is the selective media for staphylococcus what is the selective media for streptococcus what is the selective media for pneumococcus what is the selective media for neisseria what is the selective media for bot now you cannot learn the list you can learn only in comparative manner if you are comparing all 40 bacteria you can learn the selective media of all of them in a comparative manner then only it will fit in your permanent memory so what is the selective media here there are two selective medias the one is crystal violet blood agar crystal violet blood agar it is blood agar only in which i am adding crystal violet what do you mean by selective media what is the definition of selective media does anyone knows it selective media is a media on which the bacteria of interest is grow growing other bacteria are not growing currently my bacteria of interest is streptococcus pyogens so i want to grow only streptococcus pyogens i do not want to grow another bacteria on the culture plate just suppose i am having a test tube this test tube contains specimen now this specimen can be blood can be urine can be stool can be csf can be saliva can be anything this is a specimen it contains multiple bacteria inside it it contains a mixture of bacteria inside it right right i am taking a culture plate this is a culture plate and i am growing the specimen over here now the specimen contains multiple bacteria out of the multiple bacteria i want only streptococcus pyogens should grow here other bacteria should not grow here so i should take selective media for that bacteria you got my point so i want to take a selective media of streptococcus pyogens so that from the mixed cultures only that bacteria of interest is growing on the culture plate others are not growing so you take blood agar blood agar mixed with crystal violet so crystal violet will kill other bacteria but not streptococcus streptococcus pyogens now if you take one drop of your specimen and put it here on the crystal violet blood agar so crystal violet will kill all other bacteria except streptococcus pyogens only streptococcus pyogens can survive and can form the colonies so it is a selective media for that give me a thumbs up so things are very easy if you understand them give me a thumbs up the second selective media is also a nutrient agar you can say so it is pnf medium what is pnf containing three it is sorry not nutrient it is also a blood agar but instead of crystal violet in this blood agar you are adding three antibiotic first you are adding polymyxin b which will which will kill most of the bacteria then you are adding neomycin it is a anti fungal anti fungal it will kill all the fungus right and fusidic acid it is also antibiotic so p and f p stands for polymyxin b n stands for neomycin and f stands for fusidic acid so if you are taking the combination of these three drugs two are antibiotic one is anti fungal so in this specimen all other bacteria and fungus will be killed except streptococcus pyogens and streptococcus pyogens will be grown have you got it have you got it so if you have a specimen which contains mixed bacteria it contains mixed bacteria many bacteria one of the bacteria streptococcus pyogens now you want to grow only streptococcus pyogens not others so you have to take you have to take the selective media so two types of selective medias are available both of them are blood agar in the first blood agar you add crystal violet and in the second blood agar you add three things p and f polymyxin b neomycin fusidic acid this and this is antibiotic neomycin is anti fungal now now what do you take you take one drop of your specimen and grow it here also grow it here also here crystal violet will kill all other bacteria except streptococcus pyogens and here pnf will kill all other bacteria except streptococcus pyogens so only streptococcus pyogens can be grown on these selective media not other bacteria give me a thumbs up so that is the selective media selective media so till now we have done two two things number one blood agar number two selective media number three transport medium transport medium now this is a specimen there is a patient the patient is living in a village in some periphery periphery there is no laboratory there periphery mein koi laboratory nahi hai and uh, there is a patient there uh so um uh, i am a doctor the patient have called me telephonically i have given the consultation i have given the video consultation i want to take the specimen of this patient and send it to the laboratory so there is a transport person right the home collection is there so the person is doing the home collection the transport person is doing the home collection and taking the specimen to the laboratory the laboratory is present in the city so there is a transit time the transit time can be 4 hour can be 8 hour can be 10 hour depending how far the the home of the patient till the laboratory right now during this transit the the bacteria in the specimen can die and while reaching the laboratory you will not find even a single bacteria in the specimen then what is the use of collection 
you do not want the bacteria to get die during transport so during transport you have to provide nutrition to the bacteria so that bacteria khate peete raste mein aaye aur wo mare nahi so you provide nutrition to the bacteria during transport during transport if the if the laboratory is far away give me a thumbs up so you require a transport media for some fragile bacteria some uh, delicate bacteria streptococcus pyogenes is one of them right so the transport media is spikes media it is used for group a streptococcus that is streptococcus pyogenes what is spikes media if you want to learn the composition it is again a blood agar in the blood agar we are adding two things crystal molecule and sodium azide ye do cheeze humne add kar di hain so that blood agar containing two things crystal molecule and sodium azide this blood agar is known as spikes media question can come on any point your mcq can be framed on any point please remember all these things are given in panikar anant narayan the standard textbooks of microbiology give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up the last is the liquid media if you want to grow if you want to grow um, uh, streptococcus pyogenes in a liquid media you can found a powdery growth can you see here the growth is a powdery deposit and granular growth is there that's it nothing important so i am done with the culture let me summarize the culture four culture media who will give me the summary the summary tell me what is there on the blood agar tell me the name of selective media tell me the name of transport media and tell me what will happen on liquid media tell me one one word in each of them that is the summary so abhijit would you like to try tell me the summary what is the summary on blood agar it is beta hemolysis write down only one word beta hemolysis not alpha not gamma in selective media write down two names blood agar containing crystal molecule and blood agar containing pnf do you know the full form of pnf yes you know the full form of pnf it is polymyxin b neomycin and fusidic acid what is the transport media the name of the transport media is pikes media what is the composition of pikes media it is also a blood agar containing two things number one crystal molecule and second is sodium azide what about liquid media there is turbidity there is granular turbidity there in the liquid media write down one one word you will get the details every one means every one jitne audience utne thumbs up but up but give me a thumbs up you got my point you got my point so abhijit you want the okay pnf yes yes you are absolutely right abhijit you got my point does everyone got my point okay so should i proceed ahead is the lecture beneficial for you should i proceed ahead to the next heading to that is biochemical reactions of the streptococcus pyogenes should i proceed okay i will proceed give a give me a break of 5 minutes just a break of 5 minutes i am ending this link is expiring so i will end this lecture and after 5 minutes i will rejoin episode number 2 of streptococcus on this youtube channel only where you are attending so please be there on this youtube channel only that is an academy live currently you are attending the lecture on an academy live on this youtube channel only this is episode 1 of streptococcus i will continue the lecture on on episode number 2 episode number 2 i will continue after 5 minutes so my coffee is ready have a cup of tea coffee refresh yourself come back we will continue from biochemical reaction and continue the chapter till end so don't go anywhere i want everyone to come back after 5 minutes Uh, give me a minute there are few announcements for you let me do those announcements then you people can go so just a second thank you very much for being with me i really enjoyed teaching you this lecture hopefully you have learned a lot in this lecture so don't forget to write your feedback in the comment box if you have learned a lot right and uh, an academy have launched mbbs prof 1 so your juniors or you yourself are there in the prof 1 you can take the exclusive subscription of prof one only it is very cost effective so you can take it right on an academy we have three type of paid subscription you can imagine the free classes are so impressive so how will be the paid version in the paid version the team will help you to cover all 19 subjects for your competitive exam as well as university exam right so there is plus subscription iconic subscription live subscription in plus subscription you will get only an academy live and recorded lecture in iconic along with an academy you will get prep ladder also in live subscription you will get only test series the various plans are available in front of you you can see the various plans they are available in front of you minimum plan maximum plan the prices you can see one thing longer the plan cheaper it is so if you are going for a four year three year two year plan it is more cost effective to you per month wise right so my advice to you the, the students who are in first prof second prof third they, they should go for a longer plan four year three year two year but if you want to take a trial you can take as small as two month also if you are in final year you can take as small as two month also it's your choice it's your wish right so whatever plan you are purchasing before payment before going to the payment apply my code sachdev 10 if you want maximum discount 
My code is Sachdev10. S-A-C-H-D-E-V. Sachdev is my surname. So the code is S-A-C-H-D-E-V. Sachdev10. You can apply this code to get maximum discount on all these subscriptions before payment. Have you got it? Have you got it? Once you take the subscription, you will be eligible for all these batches by topmost educators from the country. Right? And we all work as a team and help you in preparation for your competitive exam. And uh, so the code, as I have told you, the code is such Dave 10. This code is useful for all the students. The one who want to take the paid subscription and want to take the plus and iconic subscription lights and the one who want to watch only free classes. The one who want to watch only free classes on the app, install the app and you can watch any of the free class using this code. Use this code to unlock. The classes are free. The free classes are free. The paid one are not free. The free classes are free, but you can, you have to use a code to unlock it. You can use this code to unlock the free classes, number one. And the one who want to take the paid subscription, the plus, the iconic, right? You can get maximum discount if you apply this code before payment. So the code S-A-C-H-D-E-V, Sachdev Tan is useful for all students. I request you all to distribute the code to all medicos, your batch groups, seniors, juniors, all the medicos throughout the globe. So that everyone can get benefit of the free education, free knowledge, which is there, as well as the paid version that everyone can get the discount. Thank you very much. Join me back just after a break of 5 minutes at 9.15 a.m. sharp for episode number 2 of Structure Focus on YouTube, same channel. Thank you.